So, what have we learned? We've learned hope springs eternal. We've learned you should never throw anything away, ever. Uh, we've learned how to get data off some old, old Amiga disks uh, and get them onto a PC where they can run on an emulator. Um, so I thought I'd do one last video where I just sum up the whole process I used to get here uh, because I know the early ones were a little bit disjointed um, and didn't quite give you the whole picture. So um, I should say at the start, there are, there are other methods of doing what I did than the method that I used. Um, there are different hardware solutions, um, but they seemed from what I read to be a little bit beyond my expertise. Um, so the method I went with involved uh, sending data from an Amiga to a PC over a serial connection. So if you want to do things the way I did them, um, here's how I did it. First of all, I needed an actual working Amiga 500, and I imagine if you're wanting to do a similar thing, this might be the hardest thing to come by. Fortunately, my good friend M. Dentith was able to gift me one. I then used a pair, a set of standard RCA cables, that's the red, white and yellow ones, to connect the Amiga to a modern television, which still worked, um, so that I could see what was going on. Uh, then I used a 25-pin null modem serial cable to plug into the serial port on the back of the Amiga, um, and connected that to a 25-pin to 9-pin adapter to plug into the serial port on the back of my PC. Um, now, if you're wanting to do this and you have a computer that doesn't have a serial port in it, uh, which is more than likely in this day and age, uh, there are serial to USB connectors. I got one of those myself, but ended up uh, not needing it. Uh, you, apparently you can also get serial to Bluetooth adapters, and supposedly either of those options uh, can work as well. But that was the hardware side of things. Uh, on the software side of things, you need um, a copy of uh, Workbench for the Amiga on an Amiga disk to run on the Amiga. This turned out to be the hardest thing for me to come by. Um, you may be lucky if you can get your hands on an old Amiga. It may well come with an old copy of Workbench, but um, I wasn't that lucky. And having asked around everyone I know, I ended up having to go through eBay um, to get myself some, but that worked. Uh, took a little while to get here, but um, they got here, they did. Um, and so once uh, I had Workbench running on the Amiga, all I needed was software on the PC side. Um, I used uh, a program called Amiga Explorer, which you can uh, download. There is a trial version which only lets you transfer very small files across. Um, I paid the license, which wasn't much at all. I'll get into costs at the end. Um, and that let me set up the connection. It, it actually walks you through the setup process entirely. Um, there's, a, there's a wizard that tells you what you need to set things up at uh, on the Amiga end, um, tells you how to, to open a, um, a command shell and exactly what commands you need to type in on the Amiga before stepping through things on the PC side. Um, now, if you recall, I actually had, um, I encountered an error while I was doing this and that it was able to set up the connection initially, which was sort of the first half of the wizard. That worked fine, but when it came to transfer data from the PC to the Amiga, I was getting error messages saying it couldn't, it didn't work. Um, and I thought I was in trouble until... I checked um, the Amiga Explorer software, and lo and behold, it was showing the entire Amiga, everything, its, its RAM disk and whatever disk happened to be in its floppy drive. Uh, so from there, it was a simple matter of dragging, um, dragging the disk from the Amiga Explorer interface into somewhere else on my hard drive, and it just copies it all across automatically. Um, I, was, I was under the understanding that it would... Um, actually copy a disk across and immediately convert it into a disk image, which didn't happen when I did it. Maybe it would have if, if the software transfer had actually worked, but at any rate, um, it simply copied across the contents of each disk into a folder on my hard drive, which was given the same name as the disk label. Um, and that was fine. I then used a, a free utility called ADF Opus, which lets you pop open a window, um, create a new uh, disk image and, and drag files from a, a file browser onto that disk image and just save it like that. So there you have um, the end result is a set of ADF files, Amiga disk uh, file, disk image files, um, and an Amiga emulator such as WinUAE, it's the one I used, um, can accept those ones easily. You just you just specify that for the, the, the file to go in the floppy drive emulation uh, and away you go. And that's it, we were there. Um, it all worked and you've, you've seen the results. 
so in terms of how much did this end up end up costing me um i spent a dollar 91 on the serial cable six dollars 41 on the 25 pin adapter um i spent 32 dollars and 41 cents this is all new zealand dollars by the way on a serial to usb adapter which turned out to be not what i wanted so i returned that one i spent 38 dollars and 60 cents buying workbench discs off a man in england over ebay uh, who then never got back to me and never sent the discs, so I had to get a refund on that, and then spent $43.94 uh, buying workbench discs off a nice man in Italy who sent them to me, and that worked out just fine. Uh, and then finally, the um, license fee for Amiga Explorer is $10 US, which worked out to f just about $15 New Zealand, um, and the grand total was $67.90, which... I don't know, maybe seems a bit much for just getting data off of four discs, but it, the, the the sentimental value to me at least was certainly worth that. And also this whole process kicked off at the start of January, which was around my birthday, so frankly I'm calling the whole thing a birthday present to myself. Um, now, had I not had to um, get workbench discs uh, flown to me from Italy, uh, the whole thing would have only cost me about $20 New Zealand anyway, so cert certainly well worth the expense, I think. And that's really all I have to say. Um, uh, thank you for watching this whole thing. I hope it's been interesting or, or entertaining or, or had some sort of voyeuristic thrill of seeing into the mind of a, of a, of a teenager back in the 90s and the, the creative process I went through there. Uh, thanks once again, of course, to M. Dentith, without whom none of this uh, would have been possible. Uh, and really, that's all I have to say. Thanks once again, and uh, maybe you'll see me again if I do another project like this.